Very quickly, if you could answer another question, because I'm curious about this. You know, the price of gold today is uh, $1,580. The dollar during these last three years was devalued almost 50%. When you wake up in the morning, do you care about the price of gold? Well, I pay attention to the price of gold, but I think it reflects a lot of things. It reflects uh, global uncertainties. I think people are, the reason people hold gold is as a protection against what we call tail risk, really, really bad outcomes. And to the extent that the last few years have made people more worried about potential of a major crisis, then they have gold as a protection. Do you, th do you think gold is money? No. It's not money. It's Even a, if it's it has been money for 6,000 years, somebody reversed that and eliminated that economic law. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's an asset. I mean, it's the same, would you say treasury bills are money? I don't think they're money either, but they're why, financial assets. Why asset. do central banks hold it? Well, it's, it's a form money. of reserves. So why don't they hold diamonds? Well, it's tradition, long-term <laughs> tradition. Now, some people still think it's money. I yield back, my time is up. Thank you. The most important response there was, do you think gold is money? No. 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 I mean, he was obviously, what was going around in his mind at that moment was, how the fuck do I get out of this? Okay, no. I'm just going to lie. I'm just going to outright lie. Because he just doesn't want to get the word out that gold has any role to play in what's unfolding here. Maybe he was thinking of fiat money. <laughs> no, he was thinking of gold. <laughs> but have a look at this, because this is from the Canadian media. Roughly about the same time, when it was very clear that people were starting to wake up to the fact that you know maybe gold was the uh, the way to go, price was rising. Now the girl in this um, uh, short clip doesn't know what she's talking about. There's no doubt about that. She's reading from a script, but the script is very very important. Listen to what she has to say about what what gold is or isn't backed by. Who's that? Bridget joins us now. Bridget, overall, how did today compare to yesterday? The biggest surprise of today was definitely gold. It was down about $100 an ounce. That represents the biggest two-day drop in 28 years. There's a couple of things going on today. Some investors were selling off their gold holdings to try to make up for losses in other areas. But Todd Hirsch says there's something else happening here, too. Some investors aren't confident that with what gold is backed by, or if it's backed by anything at all, as compared to something like the U.S. dollar. Investors are comfortable that the U.S. dollar is backed by the American government. So no matter what is happening to the American economy, the something like the U.S. dollar is backed by the Federal Reserve, that's going to be around a year from now. That's a much more comfortable investment for that. <laughs> Double purchase. think. Now, what's in that script? Well, of course, what she's, what she's doing is getting the word out that you know, gold isn't backed by anything. Mm -hmm. The fact that it is, of course, the final backstop. <laughs> yeah? Gold yes. isn't backed by anything. It's the ultimate backstop. And as Ron Paul said, that has been the law of economics for at least 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. It's not backed by anything. But then she goes on to say, unlike the US dollar, which is backed by the US government. It's backed by the US government. And then she goes on to say, and the US dollar, which will be around a year from now. But not a year and six months or something. Exactly. I mean, you, know, you have to listen, because she's not just reading a script. I'm not suggesting for one moment she has any part in this other than reading the media script. But it's, exactly, she's doing the job. But it's very, very important to listen to what these people are saying. The US dollar, which is going to be around a year from now. So I think once again, you know, we... When was that? That was uh, June of this year, when about the same time as um, the interview that uh, Ron Paul had with um, Bernanke. Now, what's this next clip? This is a short clip. This is from the BBC exactly three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. This is an investment banker by the name of Alessio Rastani. Yeah. And this is probably the most honest report that the BBC have put out in the last few decades. And in fact, so much so that the following day, the BBC tried to claim that he was a hoaxer. <laughs> but I'm just going to make sure the volume's up on this. So it's, uh... yeah, I'm at full volume, sorry. Oh. is going to crash and it's going to fall pretty hard because markets are ruled right now by fear. Uh, investors and the big money, the smart money, uh, I'm talking about 
uh, the big funds, the hedge funds, the institutions, they don't buy this rescue plan. Uh, they, they basically, um, they know the market is toast. They know the stock market is finished. The euro, as far as they're concerned, they don't really care. They're moving their money away to safer uh, assets, uh, like treasury bonds, 30-year uh, bonds, and the US dollar. Um, so it's not gonna work. We, we keep hearing that whatever the, the politicians are suggesting, and admittedly it's all been rather woolly so far, isn't right. Can you pin down exactly what would keep investors happy, make them feel more confident? Uh, that's a tough one. Um, personally, uh, it doesn't matter. That, that's it. See, I'm a trader. Uh, I don't really care about that kind of stuff. I go with what the, uh, I, if I see an opportunity to make money, I go with that. Um, so for most traders, it's not about is that we don't really care that much how they're going to fix the how they're going to fix the economy and how they're going to fix the uh, the whole situation. Our job is to make money from it. And personally, I've been dreaming of this only for three years. Uh, I I had a confession, which is uh, I go to bed every night. I dream of another recession. I dream of another moment like this. Why? Because uh, people don't seem to uh, maybe remember, but uh, the 30s depression, the depression in the 30s, wasn't just about a market crash there were some people who were prepared to make money from that crash. And I think anybody can do that. It, it isn't just for some people in the elite. Anybody can actually make money. It's an opportunity. Uh, when the market crashes, uh, when the euro and the big stock markets crash, if you know what to do, um, if, if you have the right plan set up, uh, you, can, you can make a lot of money from this. Uh, for example, hedging strategies is one. Um, then, investing in bonds, treasury bonds, that sort of stuff. If you could see the people around me, jaws have collectively dropped at what you've just said. I mean, we, we appreciate your candor, however, it doesn't help the rest of us, does it, or the rest of the Eurozone? Say this, listen. I would say this to everybody who's watching this. This economic crisis is like a cancer. If you just wait and wait thinking this is going to go away, just like a cancer, it's going to grow and it's going to be too late. What I would say to everybody is, get prepared. Uh, this is not a time right now to um, wishful thinking the government is going to sort things out. The governments don't rule the world. Goldman Sachs rules the world. Goldman Sachs does not care about this rescue package, neither does the big funds. So actually, what I, would, I, I would actually tell people, I want to help people. Uh, people can make money from this, it isn't just traders. What they need to do is learn about how to, how to make money from a, a downward market. Uh, the first thing people should do is protect their assets. Protect what they have. Because in less than 12 months, uh, my prediction is the savings of mil millions of people is going to vanish. Uh, and this is just the beginning. So I would say be prepared and act now. The biggest risk people can take right now is not acting. Alessio Rastani, thank you very much for talking to us. They played him a few weeks ago on ABC's Late Night Business. Well, the guy's, the guy's become a phenomenon yeah. around the world because they tried to debunk him. They tried to claim that he was a hoaxer. Yes, ma'am. You know, and of course, um, they couldn't sustain that. And in fact, in the end, his boss came to his rescue. Not Goldman Sachs. But his boss came to the rescue and said, hey, listen, the guy's just telling you what we've been training him to do for the last five years. And the guy is trying to give advice. Now, there's no question, what we witnessed there was the combination of I, myself, and me, the greed, I know how to make money out of this. You heard what he said, I go to bed dreaming of the next recession because I know how to make money out of it. Now the fact that he can say that also shows a sort of somewhat lack of responsibility, responsibility social responsibility and awareness that he might make money out of it, but there's a hell of a lot of people, like the majority, who aren't. But in the same breath, he was also saying, I want to help people. And actually when you read his blogs or look at some of the other interviews that the guy's done, he does actually try and share and encourage people to um, do their own research and to establish strategies to avoid getting caught up in this. But what he said was, in 12 months, the savings of millions of people will vanish. And this is, of course, achieved by collapsing the currency. So that even if you've got a quarter of a million or whatever, you know, liquidity in a, in a bank, if a quarter of a million will only buy a loaf of bread, it's collapsed. It's collapsed. Even Australian? Anything. I mean, listen, they can manipulate any, anything they want. You know, bear in mind right now, what I've said is that the average Australian has more debt 
than anybody else in the Western world. All they're going to start doing is reining in the money supply. So, so could you do like a treaty with these long countries? Say again? Could you do like a treaty with these long countries? Well, hey, listen, at the end of the day, what you've got to take into account right now is that any strategy that a country tries to put into place, like Iceland, is going to result either in trade sanctions, which Iceland is now facing, or a humanitarian, sorry, it's a kinetic humanitarian intervention, which of course is what Libya got. So, you know, th this is not something that can be met like with like. You know, that, that's why, as we were saying during the break, you know, one might argue, it might sound perverse, but one might argue that actually the best thing that can happen right now is their total collapse. So, you know, there is literally a situation where people can uh, rebuild from the bottom up, but I don't think that's necessarily going to happen. So what we've got to do is we've got to be smart. I mean, you know, what we've got to look at is, is the strategies that people can adopt to avoid getting caught up in the worst of the mess. And um, this is the guy that's driving it. I just want, I'm going to come on to some of the, the solutions in a second. Just say that like, the phrase you use, connective humanitarian, what was that? Say again? Connective humanitarian. Kinetic humanitarian intervention. What? Basically, invasion. which is an invasion. That's a nice phrase. But well, it was invented by the US military, so I just re quoted them. <laughs> we've got another character that driving the thing. Yeah, we've we'll got we'll 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 this, is, this is the guy who is the mechanic. This is the guy who is simply the mechanic. He's simply employed to, to effectively carry out the globalist strategy. I just want to show you this because this is very significant. You know, the world has been going to hell in a handbasket, and yet in that time, this guy has earned a total of $148.7 million. Most of that is bonus. Most of it is bonus. You know, he had a bad year in 2008, and in fact, I think he must have almost been on the brink of food stamps. <laughs> but the reason he got his bonus was the same reason everybody else gets a bonus from their employer i.e. they have met, or perhaps even exceeded, their goals and objectives. And this guy met and arguably exceeded his goals and objectives by bringing the global economy into total meltdown. When Rastani says governments don't rule the world, of course they don't, because at best they influence their country, and as we've already discussed, even then they don't have much influence, they don't rule the world. These are the guys who have the capacity, just like the Federal Reserve initiated the meltdown of 29, Goldman Sachs today effectively has sufficient control of the global economy on behalf of the Federal Reserve and the private bankers to bring about whatever manipulation it wants. I'm going to show you a short clip that um, is from an Irish expatriate living in North America. Now I stumbled across this clip last year when I was uh, touring Ireland and when I showed this clip there was a move to try and identify this guy and bring him to Ireland to get him to run as president. <laughs> and you'll see why when I show you the clip. This guy, in the, in the space of about two and a half minutes, absolutely nails the, the problems that led to the total collapse of, of Ireland. But he makes a comment towards the end of this, um, this short uh, interview, which is absolutely critical to why I do what I do. And I think it really needs to be the sort of primary motivation for us in terms of uh, trying to get the word out and getting other people to see what's occurring here. <laughs> 